Hey guys, it's Alyssa. Welcome to my photography studio, which is also my living room and my office. I shoot in my home, of course, and I thought it would be really fun to kind of bring you behind the scenes and show you my full process. I know a lot of you are interested in learning more about food photography, maybe starting your own blogs or Instagrams, so I'm going to show you my entire process start to finish. So we are gonna first just talk about lighting really quickly. So I am lucky enough to have two big windows right here. I open both my blinds when I'm shooting and I use this desk as my surface. So I use marble as my backdrop and actually what the surface is is marble contact paper. So all I do is pick up this heavy board and put it down on my surface. And then I make sure that I have my windows totally open and then if it's a really dark day, I'll use a poster board and I prop it up and it helps me reflect the light. So the light comes in from these two windows, obviously, and we have the poster board here to reflect the light back. So we're bouncing the light onto our subject and kind of filling in some of those shadows. So my camera equipment is in this drawer right here and I'm gonna show you what I started with because I know a lot of you are potentially interested in just getting started and you don't wanna invest thousands of dollars in your equipment. So what I first started with, and I don't even know if this camera still exists, but it's a Canon Rebel T3i. This is a few hundred dollars, you can get them on Amazon, and I recommend that if you are just getting started to buy the body only and then get a nicer lens or get the lens that you are interested in because the kit lens that comes with cameras like this just isn't great for food photography. The lens for this one, which is the one that I started with, is called the Nifty 50. That's what Canon calls it. It's like. Uh, I think it's $100 on Amazon, it's a 50 millimeter. If you're ready to jump up, which is what I did for the next step, is get this camera body. And this is the Canon 6D. This totally changed the way that I shot photography. This is a full frame camera. This isn't my primary camera now, but I still use it a lot for video. I think if you are ready to take your photography to the next level, I love the 6D. The camera that I'm shooting with now is a Canon 5D Mark IV. So I really wanted a camera that was amazing at video and this is it, but it's also really good with photography because obviously photography is still a huge part of my business as well. So now let's talk quickly about lenses. I'll show you the ones that I use and how I use them. So I talked a little bit about the 50 millimeter and I actually don't shoot with that very often. The only place that I use that lens is for my intros and outros and some of my sit down couch videos. This is the lens that I shoot with for overhead. So even overhead photos, I still use this 40 millimeter. It just has the right kind of like depth of field and things for me with the space that I have. Um, so it's a pretty decent lens, it's not too expensive. And I also really like it for travel because it's so light and small. But the lens that I use the most for my photography is this. I love the 100 millimeter macro. This is a Canon lens. This is amazing. It takes amazing quality. You can get really, really close and they get those nice tight macro shots. And this is almost always what I have on my camera. And then I have one more that I actually don't use all that often. It's still a really great lens. It is a Sigma 35 millimeter lens. This is really great for overheads, um, but it's not great for the three quarter angle. But let's talk about props and then we'll get to shooting. All right, so let's talk props. I obviously live in a small apartment in New York City, so space is an issue. Um, I use my media console to store all of my props. One thing I will say that's really good for food photography is using smaller dishes. So instead of like a big bowl that you have to fill with a lot of things, using something small is a really easy way to kind of style. And you'll see that I also have a lot of small plates. And then I also have a lot of utensils down here, but I go to like flea markets and secondhand shops and I try to get kind of vintage looking utensils or something that's a little bit more interesting. All right, now for the fun part. We are going to style some pancakes. So I have my equipment that I'm gonna use. I have my 5D Mark IV, I have my 4 millimeter on here, and I'm definitely gonna be using my 100 millimeter macro as well. 
So I want it to feel kind of warm. Um, I'm not gonna use a bunch of like blue things or anything like that. What I am gonna do is have the pancakes stacked up. I'm gonna top them with some yogurt. Um, that kind of will break up the brownness a little bit. It'll give it like a nice pop of white. I'm gonna sprinkle on some pecans <laughs> and um, that will give it like a nice crunch. It'll give it some texture. And then we'll do maple syrup, of course. One of the things to keep in mind with maple syrup is that if you are gonna shoot some pancakes and you wanna get like the slow pour, you wanna get like a nice drizzle shot, you wanna actually keep this in the freezer for a little bit so that when you pour it, it kind of really slowly drizzles and it helps you get all of those really nice shots. One thing that I actually do like to do is have two options with my utensils. Just kind of helps you have a little bit of variety with the way that you're styling without having to change up the whole scene. So since every day is different, you have to check where your camera's at. So I turn it on and it seems like it might be okay, but I do wanna just take a photo and kind of see where I am. So then I'll look at it on my camera and I can see that it's a little bit dark. Um, I think I'm actually gonna wanna bounce the light a little bit with this one. So I am gonna add that poster board in there and I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit here. So I'm liking where that is at, and I think what I'll do now is move on to my three-quarter angle because I wanna get as many shots from that as I can. I like that the best. All right, so now we're with our other lens, so the 100 millimeter macro. This is the three-quarter angle, so I'm coming at the, photo, at the food in this kind of three-quarter angle, and this is my personal favorite way to shoot. So now we're gonna do the pour over shot. And what I need to do for that is actually use a background. So I like to have white on the background and I usually just prop up this little poster board thing. Basically what I'm gonna do is just adjust my whole scene to face this way. We're gonna change our lens. We're gonna use the 480 millimeter. So I'm gonna make sure that it's on rapid fire shooting so that I can hold the shutter down and it will take a bunch of photos all at once. So I got drip shots done. Um, now I'm just gonna switch back to my 100 millimeter macro and get some of the close-ups done. So I'll kind of get down. I like this angle a lot. Then we will do a little bite shot. And then I'm just gonna do one more shot after this and I'm going to try to get inside of the pancake. And then I'm gonna do just one more. I'm gonna do an overhead so that I have, again, the variety. All right, guys, that's pretty much my process. It's fairly simple. I definitely am not a professional, like I've said, um, but I hope you found these tips helpful. If you have any questions for me, you can leave them in the comments down below. I've also, like I said, included an entire blog post and more about this tutorial. I've linked all of the equipment that I use. I've linked some great prop places. I've also included some resources, so some of the books that I read when I was just getting started, and there's also some really great courses out there now. So I'll link those for you as well. Um, I think that's all I have. I'm gonna go enjoy these pancakes, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.